Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here, and this is a follow-up to my imaging night where I try to get uh, pictures of uh, an area around the Saturn. I still don't know how to pronounce that star name uh, in the uh, Cygnus uh, constellation, uh, not far from the Cygnus wall. And while it was somewhat successful, I mean, especially for something that was completely unattended from beginning to end, including the beginning, which was the first time that I, I let Nina just do its thing, uh, I had some issues. So some of the issues will only be solvable by changing the lens and are, um, you know, not imaging under light polluted conditions. But unfortunately, I don't have a teleportation tool. So that means that on that particular setup here, I'll be changing my lens from a 50 millimeter lens to maybe a 200 millimeter lens so that I suffer from uh, gradients much less uh, than, uh, than what I have right now. Right now it's just too difficult to handle, uh, unfortunately, even though it's working actually quite well, all things considered. Uh, once I do that, I'll actually need to redo the side-by-side -side kind of uh, setup that I already showed, which means aligning my main lens to my uh, main telescope um, as well. So uh, with that out of the way, I'll just do that later. I've already shown how to do it or how I've done it in a previous video, so I won't bore you with uh, the details. Uh, next step is to understand what went wrong with my star shapes, in particular with this main scope. So we saw some really bad star shapes, and I think some of the frames were out of focus, and some were not out of focus. So there's many things I want to check. First, one of the things I'll do is I'll check my uh, guiding. And there is a tool called PHD2 Log Viewer that is free. You can just Google it and find it, which lets you look at your recent uh, PHD2 log files. And I can try to open my uh, latest file. So I'm cur currently connected to the uh, imaging computer there. And my latest file should be from uh, yesterday. Yes, yesterday evening, where it guided for three hours and 22 minutes. And let's see what we have here. Uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit there. I'm not sure why I have this kind of very, very high uh, zoom level. Okay, so the first thing we can notice is that my guiding is pretty bad. The uh, total amount is almost two arc seconds. And knowing that I have um, a pixel uh, precision, um, a resolution of one arc second per pixel, it is not acceptable. Uh, so I'm losing a lot there. So there's definitely something wrong going on with my guiding. Now, I'm seeing that it is equally wrong almost in right ascension and in declination. Uh, that tells me that either I am no longer properly polar aligned or, and, or um, there was, you know, wind uh, and you might be hearing there's a lot of wind uh, right now. And I'm guessing, and it was also the case this morning, um, my uh, telegizmo cover on the other telescope almost gone, got uh, blown away. It's a good thing I actually attached them to the telescope, otherwise it would be gone. So it might simply be wind associated with poor polar, al polar alignment. So there are several things I'll want to do. I will want to polar align this telescope, which I've been meaning to show you how I do using SharpCap and also trying out the polar alignment uh, routine in Nina. Uh, but you know, I'll do that uh, whenever the sky, the northern sky, is uh, open enough for me to actually um, to actually do that. And another thing that I'll do is I've done something recently that I don't quite like with the addition of that side by side kind of scope. Is my counterweights are all the way down. Uh, the uh, counterweight shaft and this is not good because there's more of a moment arm there basically the mount is freer will vibrate uh, more willingly than if the, the counterweights were closer to the center of rotation uh, and so I'm going to basically add the counter wow the wind I'm going to add a counterweight there to see whether that can solve this solve this so we have already several things to do. We have to change the lens on the OSC setup. We have to redo the polar alignments. We have to uh, change the counterweights uh, here. And one of the other things I'll do is I also recalibrate my guider anyway, because I'm going to change the polar, polar alignment. I want to make sure that everything is fine. This will not account for everything because we're also going to look 
at uh, what caused problems with autofocus and what caused issues with uh, my star shapes uh, besides the guiding. Although I think most of it is the guiding. I think there's a bit of tilt. And uh, so one of the things that I'll do uh, with regards to uh, the tilt will be simply, I have actually a tilt adapter there uh, that's part of my imaging system. So I'll, uh, I'll spend some time actually using it. Weirdly enough, it's attached here. Uh, I'm not sure why I'm using it because I've never actually, you know, messed with it. I've never actually used it to adjust my tilt. I never, I never had problem with tilt before. So that will be something new to me, which, uh, you know, I'll probably cover that in a video once I get, uh, get down to it. Uh, so that's a lot of things. The first thing I'll do, this the one that I think that I can do immediately on camera, is the counterweights. Now you know me, I'm too lazy uh, to remove the telescope from the, um, from the mount. So what I'm going to do right now is a typical case of do as I say, not as I do. I will be removing the counterweights while the main telescope is on top. Never, ever do that. Seriously, don't do it. Uh, the only reason I'm doing it is that I'll be like trying to kind of hold onto everything and make sure that everything is super tight. And, you know, that uh, I'll probably be fine. But anyway, I'm going to remove my uh, toe defender here. And what we're going to do is I don't have any additional counterweights just for my EQ6R. Sorry, I'm being really paranoid there okay don't move okay and so what i'm doing is i'm actually sandwiching some old vixen counterweights that i have that are for a thicker uh, counterweight shaft and by the way that's something that really surprised me with the eq6r is how thin that counterweight shaft is okay so i am going to raise that a bit while still making sure that this doesn't move. Again, do not do what I'm doing right now, seriously. And I am going to sandwich this. Okay. And now I am going to add another, the other Skywatcher counterweight uh, in the correct direction, yes. Okay. Whew. Okay, so now the stressful part is done. Uh, I shouldn't have problems with my equipment just like, you know, uh, falling, I mean, not falling, but rotating and hitting the tripod. So let's open up that axis of rotation. So the telescope is still a bit too heavy here, uh, but we're definitely in a, in a better uh, situation. I really hope that you can both hear my voice because the wind is really, really strong. Blah. Okay, so that will actually put too much counterweight. Okay, and this is not bad, and I am intentionally keeping the scope counterweight heavier. So you, you, there's actually a trick where you want to keep like the gears of the mechanism always well um, engaged uh, to each other, and so you want to have some small imbalance. The problem is that that imbalance is actually quite. Um, you know, it needs to be adjusted after the Meridian flip, which I can't really do automatically. I mean, there are people who have found uh, kind of like workarounds to do that automatically, uh, but I haven't really tried that yet. But I think I'll be fine with this amount of counterweight. And now the center of gravity of all of my counterweights, it's shifted up the shaft by a few centimeters, right? So, which is a good thing. And that will, you know, it certainly will not hurt and it might help. So that's, one thing to do okay so that's one thing uh we've seen the guiding was wrong okay so I've, i have like my work cut out for me and some other work that i need to do is uh let's check the autofocus runs so i showed in a previous video that you can uh, check your autofocus runs in excel right and analyze them but now there's a new way thanks to the work of the nina team so i'm going to open the same folder that i did in my previous video which i'm linking to right now hopefully if i haven't forgotten and we're going to go to the local app data uh, backslash nina uh, folder then we're going to go into autofocus and then we're going to see like the various autofocus runs that i had 
And uh, as I would expect, we have focus runs that are like this two in a row in a short interval of time. This is because there is one per uh, telescope. I'm not sure actually which is which. Uh, so we can look at the first one uh, for both. And the way to do that is I can just drag and drop this to one of the channels on the Nina Discord. This is not something that should be abused because otherwise it gets really uh, spammy. So I'm just going to do that in uh, the chat channel because, you know, it's because uh, why not? And immediately you can see that my autofocus uh, method was actually contrast detection. Oh my word, I forgot. It's amazing that it even worked. <laughs> Sorry, oh wow, no, no way. Let me open up Nina. Oh my word, I had completely forgotten about that. <laughs> Ah. Okay, uh, which, now which one was that? Was that the camera lens? It was not the camera lens? Was it my main telescope? Let me open a second instant of, instance of Nina with my main telescope. Did I have my main telescope on contrast detection autofocus? I can't believe it. I have to believe it. I had it on contrast detection. Oh no, disaster. Oh wow. So I'm actually impressed that I was able to get any image out of that. Wow. Okay, so that's, uh, that's good to know. And I can double check my, uh, my normal HFR that I had with my lens as well. And that's like a normal curve that I'm seeing here. Um, yeah, so <laughs> you can see that we had something weird going on. So now I know why my autofocus was wrong. It was on contrast detection on my main telescope that has uh, a central obstruction and contrast detection doesn't work so well in a standard uh, with a central obstruction. Wow, I'm so impressed that con contrast detection actually even worked. You know, it's like, it's quite amazing. Okay, so that was a surprise to me. Uh, <laughs> contrast detection, my word. I didn't expect that to be, uh, to be the case. So, okay, so now this is a very simple fix. I go to Nina and I said, star HFR. And that should remember my settings. Ah, that was so silly of me. I'm still impressed that I got a usable image, even though I used this contrast det detection with uh, the wrong uh, scope. I mean, oh my word. It would have worked actually if I had used it for the Canon lens uh, and not for the main imaging scope. Uh, but uh, we can see that uh, it worked you know, quite, uh, quite well overall. I'm actually quite impressed by, uh, by what we got. Okay, so uh, we saw another method of looking at the autofocus. I thought I was going to have to change my exposure time or something like that. But no, it was my method that was wrong. Uh, is you go to Discord, you do not abuse that system. You just do it like once or twice and you look at uh, the result from uh, after drag and, dragging and dropping the JSON file directly into the uh, Discord, uh, the Nina Discord, obviously. So uh, that's several things I, I've uh, needed to enhance. So there was uh, the autofocus. Fortunately, it seems that I have an answer to that. There's been uh, the um, uh, polar alignment, which I will probably want to adjust. There's been the wind that I want to turn off, uh, but you know, I probably would need to build a dome on this roof balcony. Uh, there's the guider that I want to recalibrate. My counterweight is done. I want to change my 200, my 50 millimeters lens to 200 millimeters lens so I can deal with light pollution gradients, uh, with fewer light pollution gradients. And then I'll probably spend a session doing the tilt adapter adjustment. And so that's been my error analysis for my session uh, last night. So it's uh, very brief, but there were tons of points to enhance. And you know, that's the main thing. Uh, find the things you need to fix and you know, just go ahead and fix them. The standard scientific approach. 
so okay that that was pretty much it for this uh this little session there um <laughs> i'm sorry about like this uh this plot twist uh, that we had. I was not expecting that. I probably had turned on contrast detection as a test while filming one of my videos and completely forgotten about it. Uh, but anyway, you know, uh, I hope this can be useful because, you know, uh, finding out what went wrong after a session is extremely useful. It's extremely important. And, uh, and so I hope like, you know, the, the, the very simple steps that I followed right now help you, will help you uh, also analyze your own sessions and of course you know if uh, you find uh, or found this video uh, useful please click the like button uh, you can also leave a comment down below also feel free uh, to subscribe uh, and uh, you know and click the little notification icon so that you're notified about new videos that i post and again thank you so much to, for watching uh, please don't forget to look up at the stars whenever you can and i'll see you next time